Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with my 1997 Chevrolet Blazer. What brings us here today is a brake master cylinder replacement. I will insert some footage here of it behaving weirdly. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that geysery thing or not. The more I'm researching, the more I'm thinking it's probably fine. But spoiler alert, I already bought another one, so we're going to go ahead and put it on. And this is a master cylinder I have selected for replacement. To my surprise, it was the cheapest one I could find, but it is new. This is not a rebuilt unit. There was no core on it. I think it was like 33 bucks on Amazon. It was cheaper than Rock Auto. So that is what we're going to roll with. It seems to be a quality piece. It comes with little bleeder doodads, which we'll talk more about here in a minute. And of course, it came with a new reservoir. So my old nasty reservoir and all that's going to leave. The first thing we're going to do with it is bench bleed it, which is what these little plastic screws are for. But the idea is that you would just push in the end of this, apply some pressure, crack this guy loose, and it'll purge the air. And you just keep adding fluid until you get all the air out. I've also seen guys just use their fingers. So you just put your fingers over here, run that guy in, it'll shoot fluid out. You hold your fingers over it while it comes back so it can't suck air in and just do it that way. Both of those methods make a pretty big mess and they also waste a bunch of brake fluid. And since I am an idiot and plan things out poorly, all I have is this little tiny midget bottle of brake fluid to do this whole job with for now. So I've got this 12 ounce bottle to hopefully bleed my rear brakes and this cylinder and get the truck so it has brakes at all four corners. That's probably not gonna happen, but we're gonna try. As part of doing that, I've made up these guys, which are just lines that are gonna plug in here and then loop back into the reservoir in the top so we don't waste any brake fluid and we hopefully don't make any mess. This was all made out of basically scrap stuff I just had laying around. And if you've been here before, you may notice that I have a ton of junk cars, so I don't mind having little tools like this in my inventory to be able to grab whenever I need them. Now, if you do not have a bench vise, first of all, I highly encourage you to get a bench vise. This is probably one of the most useful tools in the shop. But if you don't have one today, you can also just do this on the vehicle. You can just bolt this whole thing on and then just use the brake pedal to depress this and run the fluid through it a whole bunch of times. You will probably be a little bit more messy doing it that way. Speaking of, before I forget about it, there will probably be some mess here when I take these bleeder hoses out. Or you can also put the vehicle hoses in here and crack them loose and have a buddy help you. So you use these like bleeder screws. Or I've also put plenty of master cylinders on without bench bleeding them at all. And for me, it's worked out fine. A lot of people will tell you that you'll never get the air out of them if you don't bench bleed them. I've not found that to be true, but it's better if you do bench bleed them. But the method here is pretty straightforward. We're gonna put some fluid in this guy. I'm not gonna go crazy right away, just in case this happens to be defective new out of the box. And you can see already it's sort of helping itself. Although I think some of that air might be coming out of my rubber hoses, plastic hoses. But to run the piston, I just happen to have this brass punch that fits in here nicely. The idea here is to do this slowly. And since this is new and fidgety, there we go. There we go. So there you can see it pushing a ton of air out. Push again. Doing this while holding a camera is also not the easiest thing in the world. Okay. All right, so we definitely need to add some more fluid to the rear. And I don't see any huge leaks forming all yet, so that's good. Looks like we need some both reservoirs. We'll hit it again. It's like so. And the idea is just to keep doing that and doing that until there's no more air coming out. And I've heard various people say various things like you only want to partially stroke, just like, you know, a little bit at a time like that, or one reservoir, or the other won't bleed, you know, whatever you do, you just experiment until you don't see any more air. Let's let Saddington be useful as a hand pad from a push stick. <laughs> Hopefully I don't stab him to death. That would just be horrible. Oh yeah, this is much more comfortable. Slightly phallic, yes, but effective. I don't know if I can't move enough fluid to just get the last little bit of air out of the hoses. I would really like to see this completely bubble free. You know, see if we can get the... Oh, we just got some bubbles out of the front reservoir. Saddington squeaks, by the way. And we're getting tons of tiny little bubbles 
out of the rear. Right now I also have these hoses directly in the reservoir holes. I'm gonna move them over. I just did that so they wouldn't splash. I'm hoping they still don't. Whoa. Interestingly, that is exactly what the one that I'm replacing was doing. Hopefully we're not doing it for no reason. But the one that I'm replacing also, I could not vacuum bleed. You just got a ton of air out of the front. I'm just making a geyser out of the rear every time. All right, so it's just gonna look like this for a while. We'll meet back up in a moment. Well, I think this one might be a case of me just not knowing my vehicle very well. I've looked up several videos of other people bench bleeding these plastic reservoir GM style master cylinders, and they all have the geyser thing happening in this rear reservoir. I've looked up plenty of other videos of like the old school GM ones, like the cast iron or cast aluminum reservoirs, and they don't seem to do the geyser thing. I went around and looked at the other three vehicles here and they're all just screw caps. I don't have anything where I can actually watch what's going on. So I think this behavior is normal. The internet being what it is, I found reports both ways. So I'm going to go ahead and just add fuel to that fire of incompetence by sharing my own. The thing is, that is, I'm really not moving this very fast or very far. And it is really just geysering on out of there. I mean, you have to keep in mind too, this issue is being driven by the fact that I could not pull fluid through the one that's on the truck now that is exhibiting this exact same behavior. And you can also see this one doesn't really seem to be pushing much fluid. I don't know. I don't know. It's messing with me, man. So what I've done here is I've got this abomination set up to go off to my vacuum bleeder. And I'm going to see if I can pull fluid through it. Because that should work, right? Yep, sure can. And just while that's hooked up and has fluid in the line and everything, I'm just going to pump it. And gigantic geyser again. Let's see if I can give you guys a feeling for how slow I'm pushing it to get that geyser. I mean... <laughs> I'm not pushing it very aggressively. <sighs> so I push it down. Yeah, I can still pull full of fluid through it. Man, I don't know. It's looking like the master cylinder that's on it is probably fine. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna say this is probably fine, but I'm gonna also say the one that's on the truck right now is probably fine too, which is frustrating. I don't know why I'm not able to bleed it then unless there's like an obstruction in the ABS pump. And since I have the rare gift of being able to 100% accurately predict the past, it looks like I was probably right about that. This style of ABS pump is fairly difficult to research, or at least I found it fairly difficult to research, because it seems that GM only used this for a reasonably short period of time and only on the S-series truck. So when you look this stuff up, you're going to see a different pump for the full-size trucks. With all of that said, I think that these rubber caps come off and there is a centering valve in here that moves that when the rear brakes lose pressure, that valve moves over and blocks off that port. And since the guy I bought this thing from was driving around for only God knows how long with the rear brake lines open like that, that spool no doubt must have shifted over. The fact that I was able to get it to bleed at all was probably just a matter of luck. It probably shifted the spool back on its own just when I started pushing fluid through it. So I'm 90% certain that's what happened. Now we need to take our lines off, which is why they have caps, or at least what we're gonna use the caps for. The smaller one goes back here in the rear, and the only fluid we should lose is out of the line itself. So of course I'm gonna do it left-handed. These are plastic, so I don't wanna go crazy. Same thing over here. Should probably put the lid on this thing before I dump it over and make a giant mess instead of the almost giant mess that we have now. Let's get that thing out of the vise, get my fluid mess cleaned up, and then we're gonna get this guy swapped on even though we probably don't need it. So changing it out shouldn't be any big deal. It's the bleeding of the brakes afterward that I'm worried about. Uh, the front brakes on this thing are hopelessly rusted over. I actually bought all new front brakes for it too, somewhat because of this, but I'm hoping we don't have to get into that today. I would like to get the thing bled and then be able to drive it just like that much just to make sure things like you know we have all the gears and the transmission and maybe verify the four-wheel drive works and crap like that before we keep spending money and effort on this thing so let's see if we can get it so it's safe to take around the block basically 
First step of getting that guy off is I'm going to remove this air intake track just because it'll be a little easier to deal with. It's kind of like a wing nut deal back there we got to take off and then like four screws on the box itself. Not a big deal. So where your carburetor would live. And this thing has funky fuel injection that's just barely fuel injection in my opinion. Or I guess it's more like diesel injection. And the air box has little wing nut screws but I find they're easier just to do with a long Phillips. Let's give you a little bit better reach. Once we get it all loose we can just kind of jimmy it on over. I don't actually need to pull it out of the truck. Leave the filter in the box so no stuff falls in it. And now we have pretty nice access to that guy. It looks like those are both 15s. Mm. That guy broke loose, which is good news. As is this guy. Before I go any further, I'm going to pop the lid off of this dude and suck out the rest of the brake fluid with my suction gun. Just so when I take the lines off, it makes it less of a mess. And for both those lines, you're going to need a 9 16th flare nut wrench. Almost unbelievably, they are not completely rusted over on this thing. Hopefully they pop free. That one did. And again, unbelievably, so did the other one. All right, switch over to a regular wrench a little bit quicker. I'm going to get my new guy and put him on standby. So I want to try and introduce as little air into the lines as possible. Now that the lines are broke free, we can get a better start at this, I'd imagine. Good grief, really? Yeah, they're rusty. I'm getting into the rusty portion of the threads on the studs. Alrighty, that is probably close enough to get the lines the rest of the way off. Alrighty. Let's see if I can just kind of jimmy these lines out of the way a little bit. Yep. That dude is out. Actually, those were Loctited on and rusty. Whether or not it's a good idea, I'm gonna try and get this thing completely installed to the booster before I take those plugs out. So we can get our plugs out. Maybe not make an enormous mess. Gonna need a hand to push since I bent that line a little. And I was kind of afraid of that. You bend a line up, they don't always wanna go back in the same place without cross-threading. I was also wondering earlier if it wouldn't bite me having it all the way tight. <clears throat> they may want some freedom of motion. Nah, that's cross-threaded. Oh yeah, fun times. Actually, I don't think that is cross-threaded. The guy's on there. I'm just going to leave him loose a few rounds and pretty much forlorn hope that it'll gravity bleed and I did go out and get more brake fluid only the finest all right now it's going to be second verse same as the first on this guy all right so I've got those both loose several turns I'm gonna let them sit there and drip for a few minutes and we're just gonna pray that that bleeds most of the air out probably won't work Alrighty, so everything's all bolted down tight. Now I have this tool here, which is a brake pedal depressor. I'm going to go push the brakes down and hold them down and then crack those lines each and see if I can push some air out of them. Just kind of wishful thinking. I'm really hoping I don't have to try and bleed the calipers on this thing. All right, so that guy is pinning the brake pedal down against the power seat. Let's try and crack the front. I did get some fluid out of it. Now I'm going to go run the power seat again to pump the pedal again. We'll do the rear. That actually produced some air, and it still is. That's good news. Okay, since that dumped some air out, I'm just going to run it again. And if you weren't following things before, that's what's going on here. That stick is of adjustable length, and it's pressing up against the bottom of the seat bracket. When I run the power seat back, it's going to lift the brake pedal. There it's loose, so I'm going to run it forward again. I'm noticing the trick here is to not get too aggressive with the forward. Like that seems to be plenty. So let's see if we produce some more air. Just a little bit. But this is the idea. I'm going to do this over and over until I don't see any more air out of either of them. So I'm not getting any more air out of those two guys. I'm going to try and repeat this process at the ABS pump here. 
but at least for the rears because the rear is what was giving me the trouble and it's going to be kind of a fun time because the line i need to bleed is that guy way down there and it's kind of hard to show you but there's very poor access for that so what i have is a crowfoot flare nut socket on an extension so i'll be able to slip this guy in there and then with a ratchet break it loose or at least that's the hope I'm going to be able to show you guys none of that, so you'll just have to take my word for it. And I'm hoping this isn't just like a suicidally stupid plan. It looks like those lines will come off. They're not rusty. But I've never tried to bleed an ABS pump unbelievably right now, or actually, I think for the past 16 or 17 years, uh, I've had not owned anything with ABS. The Blazers is the only thing in that time, so I've never had to worry about this. So that worked exactly like I hoped it would. It produced fluid and no air, so time to go back to wheel cylinder and see if we can pull a vacuum through it. And against all odds, I actually got a pretty decent camera shot there for you that I will probably obstruct. So the plan here is you want to break this loose while you're pulling a vacuum. No fluid. So I have bled and bled and bled. I pulled about that much fluid through it, which is about one of these. So about 12 ounces, maybe a little less. And it is still pulling easily as much air as it is fluid. That doesn't seem right. Normally I would expect to find a leak somewhere, but I'm pumping the thing up at the pedal and it's actually starting to get a pedal. And if I pumped it up and it was leaking, there'd be, you know, puddles of fluid on the ground, pouring out of something, or I need to rename it Jesse Ventura. Cause it ain't got time to bleed. Anyway, I'm going to get back to it. We'll mess with this for another hour, I guess, and see if I can get all the air worked out of it. Alrighty, so I bled and bled and bled on this thing, and it's still just pulling tons and tons of air. But as I recall, the Jeep kind of did this to me too, which is why I ended up buying the pressure bleeder attachment for it. I think I'm going to buy the pressure bleeder attachment for this one too, but I think it's actually okay. It has brake pedal like a madman. I started it up and just moved it an inch or two, and the brakes are grabbing. I pumped the brakes up and totally forgot once again about the geyser out of that rear. So I coated everything in brake fluid. So if there is going to be a leak overnight, I won't know. I'm going to dip it outside quick while there's still like that much daylight left and hose it all down. So I just whipped it around the block a little bit. Uh, spoiler alert, rear axle is super loud. That's probably not good. So I didn't learn a whole lot except that this thing still doesn't have enough brakes to go on a real test drive. Thought it was okay until I rejiggered the Jeep and the Escort in the driveway and just about put myself through the windshield of both of them. So I don't know if replacing that master cylinder is actually what allowed me to bleed the brakes or if maybe we just had an air bubble in the ABS and I could have bled it that way anyway. I'm willing to say that I replaced a part that didn't need replaced just to put the blame on me because I don't know. I'm happy to have a new hydraulic part on the thing instead of, you know, 25 year old brake parts of unknown quality and all that. So all in all, that's fine. I believe what's going on with the thing now is I need to get the front brakes bled and they are in such poor condition that's just never going to happen. The bleeders aren't going to open or anything else. And this is the part of the video where you'll be shocked to hear that although my plan was to just bang calipers on this thing real quick like and bleed it all in the same video, that that didn't actually go all that easily. So that's going to end up being a whole separate video where we do the front brakes and then, you know, work on bleeding the thing some more. As always, appreciate you stopping in for this video. We will catch you on the next one.